John from Face Down here, and we are with two guys from the band Amir. Uh, and you are Mike. And what do you do in the band? I play stage right guitar. And I'm also Mike, and I play center stage drums. So. All right, double mics. Yeah. All right. Uh, first question: um, What was it like losing your founding members, Joe and Ben, um, who basically you know started the band? Um, did you guys ever think about breaking up after losing those founding members? The funny thing about that question is that we were both replacements of those two members. So we actually made out pretty good from the whole deal. But we still remain close friends with Ben and Joe. They're awesome dudes. We throw with uh, with uh, Ben this summer. He works for Suicide Sonics now. We're on the work tour. And it's all good. We hang out. There's no bad blood or animal or anything like that. But um, I, I think, it, uh, I don't know, I can't really comment as far as the band goes. I wasn't in it, so I can't really give a fair statement on it. But maybe Mike can. Uh, yeah, I mean, they called me in basically like the day after they had found out that you know things weren't working the way they were. Uh, and I don't think that the band ever really contemplated breaking up. That's why they, well, like, you know, I've been friends with uh, Jesse uh, my whole life. You know, we're like step siblings, uh, and uh, I think it was just kind of like we lucked out in that it was a seamless transition that way because they kind of knew, all right, we have a couple of guys that can fill in right now. Uh, and yeah, I don't think it really ever stopped the momentum of the band. They just figured now that they had had <clears throat> the. Um, freedom to kind of figure out what they wanted to do without having those problems in the band, that it actually made for a better situation for them. So, you know, inevitably, I think that they, they knew that, you know, it was for the better and that it wasn't going to stop them. And that was, that was pretty much it. Here we are, nice. two years later. So. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and I'm going to mix it up, throw in a, a kind of some funny questions. Uh, do you guys have any pre-show rituals that you guys do before show? Um, I don't know if you consider smoking tons of weed and drinking but, um, definitely it helps. Happens, I guess. Um, I don't know how to do it. We, that ritual, we right? keep like a, we like do a positive hands in that uh, oftentimes we'll make a reference like wherever we are, like or whatever is going on that day, whatever the subject of the day tends to be, like what we count off and put our hands in and try to go on stage with like a, you know, positive vibe. And uh, it's basically it. We eat, drinks and uh, positivity. <laughs> and I noticed you got a uh, quite a bit of uh, ink there. Um, yeah. Any uh, particular artist you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, tons. Um, first and foremost, my good friend Adam Pace, he's over at Red Rocket in Manhattan. Um, Dan Belcher and Dustin Grand from Dead Presidents Lounge in Albany. Uh, Ashley McMullen from True Tattoo in Clifton Park. Um, so many. I've been tattooed by a ton of people, but I appreciate all of them. And we have a newcomer. How are you doing? And your name is? Jesse Keita. I play guitar in New York. All right, excellent. All right, and uh, where's your guys' favorite place to play while you're on tour? That's not a fair question. <laughs> but, I mean, of course, there's, there's a spot that we all... I mean, there's certain areas where, we, you know, our shows are amazing, always. We're never let down by New York City, Southern California, Denver's always amazing. Um, Texas, everywhere. Everywhere is great. This whole tour, there hasn't been a single day. Even in spots where we're usually a little iffy about it, um, there's still been nights, like, for example, El Paso, Texas, on a Monday... Which is usually like, you know, no offense to El Paso, kind of a desolate, you know, not a big, good place to play on a Monday, but uh, on this tour, I think we had like 1,100 people, the fucking place exploded, it was awesome. So, uh, I mean, I have no complaints about any tour to play. Well, oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. And I, I know for us, it's just some of the settings are nice, like Denver, the skyline is beautiful yesterday, Montana uh, was also beautiful. I'm trying to think where else was the gorge out in Washington. Oh, that was a beautiful yeah. place. I mean, just really, just epic all all around. You know, you just feel like you're playing in uh, in heaven somewhere. So mm-hmm. there, there are cool places like that. But you know, again, just the crowds. You know, in a lot of the markets in New York are always good because it's like all the town there. Right. In California, they really represent Texas. Like you said, you know, places like this. It's just it's beautiful. So I'm really lucky. And how was it filming your new video, Solar Flare Homicide? Well, it was amazing. Uh, Frankie Nass was a good guy. You know, he's worked with us a lot of times before, so I think that he just had like a clear vision of what you know we could do with the resources that we had, and he really maximized that potential just with the camera angles, the coloring, the lighting, and just kind of getting that whole real show element. I mean, I had people kicking my fucking drum set yeah, over every take. Ridiculous. I didn't think any of the takes would be good because it was literally every take. It was like kids jumping all over us, jumping on everything all over the car, guitars, the rhythm, the ground, with the Dodge kids were moshing and jumping up and down. And uh, at the end of the day, it was, it was fucking awesome. Uh, we had a great time. We really appreciated that all the fans came out with a day's notice. 
and um, really just killed it. I think Frankie did an awesome job with the editing. It's like seriously, so many cameras in there. It's all over the place. Yeah, fast and, fast and painless. Usually videos are yeah. not fast and painless, and because he had 15 cameras at once going, he, he just, just so legit. put so together sweet. real. Yeah, 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 really, really, really good. I'm stoked on that whole thing. It was, came together great. It was easy. Like, can't, I can't complain. I mean, you know, everything they said. Yeah, and it was more. To me, it was what was cool is that it was like more grassroots, but I feel like people will have given it a better reception. You know, they're like, "This is the best video you guys have done," yeah. and it's pretty bare bones. Yeah, yeah. It's it's awesome. like, jamming, yeah, for sure. Fans, like it is in the show. You know, now, growing up, did you guys ever, you know, think that you guys would be in a band like this, signed on Victory Records? Uh, uh, me personally, I just uh, I think it was always like a childhood dream of mine ever since I was about like 10 or 11 years old to perform. I don't think you know the specifics of it, and I always feel like when you attain your goals in life, they come with a certain amount of you know things that you just don't expect to happen. Uh, but you know, I, I would say that the reason that we're all here is because of the fact that yeah, we always believe that we can do it, and we always believe that you know no matter what people say or what people want to hear, we're gonna put out the best thing we know how and play it, you know to you know. Until the wheels fucking fall off, and that's basically what we've been doing here. I think for everyone in the band, like it's never been a plan B. It's always just kind of been like we're all pretty driven, motivated individuals. And, uh, I don't know. As things progress, I just feel like we're all thirsty for it. We have in our whole lives, and it's just like this. Just for me, I feel like it's a logical step. I mean, growing up listening, worshiping these heavy bands, these fucking Corn, Fear Factory, you know, Pantera, Sugar, all these bands. You know, like I always. You know, romanticize it, glamorize it as a child, and then like you know, now you, you can see how it really is, and it is still amazing. You know, it's like so cool to be able to do this for a living, and I feel so blessed and just you know lucky to be able to do it. And but uh, I think what it comes down to is if you really want to do it, you have to have a fucking dream when you're a little kid, because otherwise you're gonna lose sight of your goals, and you know you fucking start working at a diner or whatever. And, <laughs> nice. Now, how do you guys deal with any negativity uh, from the crowd during a show? Uh, do you call them out, or do you just keep, keep playing your set? Or usually, when uh, there's a uh, you know, we, yeah, we, we haven't had we haven't had it as of late, but the, uh, when we would have those kinds of things happen, usually it's like those people that are the hecklers really are outnumbered by our fans, and so we kind of just let you know our show do the talking. And, you don't really pay them any mind. You feel like, you know, the more attention you give them, the more they feel like, oh, that's great. Now i got to, you know, take it to the next level and throw something or try to fight with these dudes. And we're not about that. You know what I mean? If you disagree with what we're doing, that's all well and good. You know, I mean, you can share your opinion, but usually you're still paying to come to the show to share your opinion and you're surrounded by people that actually enjoy our music. So, you know, you kind of feel left out like a fucking idiot. <laughs> kind of, kind of like that to do it its own thing. There's absolutely nothing, or no band, or no operation, or no anything that's going on that's not completely just you know opinionated and and ripped apart. And oh, it's the best, and oh, it's good, and you know, anything from you know a type of shoe to a type of band. So there's always going to be negativity, and like, just like they you know said it, that's how we would address it. And the less we address it, and because that's the way it, you know it comes with it, the more they push, and the more well, the haters, our name like, is, is just coming out of you know people's mouths and. And that's that's what it's about. That's just like you know, like I'll give the example: Britney Spears. Everybody, almost everybody in the world talks about her. She's huge, rich. That's all the records. Uh, Michael Jackson, right? Great. People would love to bash him and bash him and, and make fun of him and, and, and make jokes. He was the best. You know what I mean? So even now, look at like Barack Obama. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like everybody's like, "Oh, his approval ratings in the dirt." Motherfucker is still president. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, and you don't, and you don't see people going up, going like, "Oh, you know what, man? I really disagree with you on this, this, and this." And I'm going, "You know what? Fuck you." <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Like he goes, "Oh, I understand your opinion. You can't satisfy everybody." And we kind of take that same approach. You know, kind of have that executive branch going on. <laughs> nice. Now, what do you guys like to do uh, during your downtime uh, when you're not playing shows or recording? Uh, me personally, I just love you know doing what pretty much everybody else does, hanging with my family, my friends, my girlfriend, uh, you know, going out to eat, going shopping, just hanging with the local crew, you know, doing whatever's going on. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough because a lot of the time you find kinship and people on the road and you don't really kind of encounter them as much, but because we're all kind of from the same general area and have friends in that area, usually when we're home it's really, you know, over welcoming and there's just so many people that you want to catch up with and see how their day-to-day lives have been, so... It's kind of like that. You kind of get grounded again. You hang home. You do the thing. You know, get the, the typical everyday elements going on, and then 
back on the road and this is the other side of that normalcy. You know what I mean? It's not always, you know, partying and bull- bullshitting, whatever. I mean, that's a lot of it. But, you know, for us, it's like, you know, we, have, we try to have a good time, get our family dinners going on, you know, do our thing, and, and be there for each other. So it's, it's cool like that. Is there any uh, special um, little, like, uh, you want to let your fans in on that no one else knows about? Any little secrets about the band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Secrets are meant to be secrets. Let's see, uh, what secret? Seems pretty open, though. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty honest with our fans. We don't have any skeletons in the closet at this point. Yeah, especially as far as touring, as far as, you know, whether or not we're writing, what we're doing, you know, I mean, I think, like, our fans are pretty in tune with that. Yeah, we try to keep it going, you know, updated and everything. We're always writing, like, honestly, like, on our free time, I think me and Jesse, everyone, everyone sits home and we have recording rigs and we are already writing the next record, you know what I mean? Like, Excellent. we constantly have ideas moving and we can't stop. It's just kind of like, not an option. You just gotta get going and just go and run with it and then you have rest and then albums happen and then people are happy and you want to work and everything's great. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We've just all been brainstorming since, you know, I mean, since we're on the road so much. So we try to jam as much as we can and it's funny because it's like, you know, Frank will write something and that might be in a completely different context and then Jesse will write something and we'll go, oh, maybe I want to use this riff, uh, you know, in the future and then Recon will add something to it. It's a never-ending process. Yeah, it's just this never-ending yeah, process just of just Record creating. to record to record. When we're home, it, that, that's when it's like, all right, got to really write it and, and, and record it and then otherwise it's we're on the road, on the road, on the road, piecing together our next record. This is, you know, going back from... Uh, uh, 2006 when we did the Goodbye to the Gallows record ever since then it was record go out on the road support it, support it, support it practice it there's no practicing it's practicing it's playing shows then come home with a little bit of time go out and then when you come home for that one break that's when it was like alright let's write the record and you know things things have progressed over time with you know the computers and stuff so it's a little easier for us to, to write now we can send each other ideas so like he said we were just you know just writing riffs just going and going, going. Yeah, yeah. for me at home I just like in the morning Walk a split, have a couple cups of coffee, you know, just get my recording rig running, and it's just, from there it's all great. It's just, the rest of the board, I mean, just the same way, Mike's the same way, we all kind of just, creatively, it seems like we're all on the same page, I think that's what makes the band work a lot. Obviously, Frank and Jesse do come a lot for most of the writing, but, you know, we all uh, have our two cents, and, and I, I really like the way these build it's just so smooth. Now, how does it feel knowing that your new album, Speaker of the Dead, debuted at number 11 on the top independent albums? Oh, it's, uh, it's the biggest accomplishment yeah. ever, yeah, for it's us. Awesome. I mean, the, you know, it seems like a lot of bands, what will happen is they'll kind of plateau, you know, around their second or third release because people, you know, they're always looking for the flavor of the week kind of thing. And, you know, they might not give people an honest listen or give that kind of support. They'll download the record versus buying it. But we feel like, you know, what we've, we've shown in doing that is that we've brought something to the table that people genuinely want, people want to support, uh, you know, and uh, it's reflected in our shows, and, you know, the numbers don't really count as much as they used to, uh, on the performance end of things especially, but, you know, it's indicative of the fact that people are still buying into... Yeah, the reality is if we did 2,000 copies versus the 10 and a half, it would be like, whoa, you know, with, with the, the crowd response and just the flow, everything's going, that would kind of be weird, so it's like... It's not, you kind of expect some. It's like with anything, you know, getting the Ibanez endorsement, this, that. You know, do you want it? Do you want it? you want it? You kind of expect it. Like, I want, we got, we're going to get this, right? Like, we're working for this, 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 this. So when you get it, it's it's such a rewarding feeling, but it's more like, a, oh, yeah, okay. Like, like all right, because, you know, this is our life, our business, our futures, and everything. So, you know, day by day, it's definitely a, a grind. It's a grindstone cowboy, as Sean O'Malley would say. <laughs> uh, now, uh... Do you have anything you would like to say to your fans? Yeah, of course, always. We just always want to thank our fans, you know, with uh, the most humility and just, uh, you know, appreciation of what we can show because without, you know, you guys coming to these performances and actually giving a shit about what we do... We're buying a record so it comes out at number 11 on the chart. Exactly. Exactly. We would would have absolutely no purpose and we'd have no possible way of being here. I mean, the truth is is that it's... uh, you know, it's one hand washes the other, so to speak. You know, the fans wanting to support us and bring it here is what allows us to have the finances and the time and, and the resources to make all this happen. So we just want to thank you guys for doing that. And, uh, you know, we're just going to keep on doing what we do as long as you want to hear it, even after that. We'll just keep pushing it until you want to hear it so much. Nice. And last but not least, uh, what's in store for 2011? Any more tours, videos that you can tell us about? You mentioned about a new album. Headlining tour we got coming up. Uh, we're going to be out this summer in all 
first tour, uh, which is us headlining. We're going to have Alessana, uh, I believe Bless the Fall. Uh, I wrestled the Bear ones after the burial, Ghost Inside. Uh, all killer Fortuna. bands. Yeah, We've yeah, actually interviewed a, most of those bands. Awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be a brutal crusher of, of a tour, and uh, we're going to be hitting all major cities. So please stay tuned and check that stuff out because it's going to be fun and awesome. You heard it here first, like we Don said it. That's basically what's going on with us. I don't even know if we're supposed to announce that yet. But Whatever. Uh, All Stars? Did they announce it? Um, I don't know if it got announced. I haven't been like uh, computer, computer, like when I am at home. So I, I, it maybe got announced. I don't know. But uh, real, real soon they'll be announced. I'm sure by the time this gets together, that, that'll be released. So that's going to be a banger because uh, you got Warped Tour, which is a great tour. You got the Mayhem Tour. Nice. Um, and to even stand a chance if you want to do something a little different. Uh, like we did, you know, we did Warped Tour a few dates in 2009. Then we did the whole Warped Tour in 2010. Uh, so this year, we're going to mix it up a little, do a little headlining thing with all these bands. I feel like it'll be really cool. It'll be like basically one of the only alternatives that, that a, a, a lot of people would go to because they're already all warped and mayhemed out. So I'm really excited about that. To you know what I mean? And then you know, see what happens for next summer and just keep it going. You know, that it's crazy. We'll, we'll plan ne- next summer in August. You know, that's the way that's the, that's the politics. There's a secret right there that well, I'm sure a lot of people don't know. That tours get planned so far in advance because you gotta, it's like chess. You gotta figure out what's going on and what, and it, it, you know, it's exciting and frustrating and everything. So it's the biz. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, everyone, check out Victory Records uh, artist Amir. If you haven't, check him out. These guys are badass. Face down is out.